just so you just know. So you know. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, 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 let's go. Let's go. It's time to turn up your radio. Yeah, 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 Times will flow. Just so you know. Just so you know. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for coming and watching. Or if you're listening to um, us on our audio streaming platforms, such as Spotify, welcome. Welcome to the Kicking in with K Marie podcast. I am your girl K Marie, and I am excited this evening because I fixed my microphone. Well, I had help, but yes, it's fixed. Y'all just don't know what this means because my audio was back up to the quality that it's used to, and I just so I just hate the computer uh, microphones. You know, it just sound much much better with a mic, okay? So for those who are watching us or listening to us for the very first time, welcome, okay? Uh, Kicking It With K. Marie podcast, we are a podcast for the culture, okay? I love my people and what I do is for my people. And I know that I have non-black people who listen and watch and subscribe to my podcast. And I thank you. I believe the information anybody can glean from it, but um, I especially want to bring certain information um, to my community that will help us. Okay. So yeah, so we are a podcast for the culture here. You receive advice. You will laugh, you will learn, and you will think. Okay. And I just want to say that thank you for hanging in there with me. I really appreciate each and every one of you. We stream on every streaming platform. Y'all know I'm about to say my regulars, except for title, but everything else like iHeartRadio, um, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Pandora, um, Podcast Addict, all of the streaming services. Okay. And I have people again who subscribe to the different streaming services. Thank you so much. And if you are listening to me um, and you have yet to subscribe, why don't you go ahead and um, follow us um, and subscribe to us. Um, As you see the scroll at the bottom, for those who are watching, um, you can watch us on our Instagram page and our Facebook page at at the handles at Podcast. As you see it there, or those of you who are listening only, again, Instagram and Facebook is at K Marie Podcast. And if you want to email me, you can email me at um, info at K Marie Podcast.com. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are wrapping up um, February, the month of love. (laughs) It's been designated the month of love. I have yet to do research on why February. I love to do research. I really do. I was that kid in school who loved to write like papers, term papers, research papers, any type of paper. You know, that was five, 10, 20 pages. And I like going to the library. Those of you, such as um, some millennials and Definitely Generation uh, Z. Yes, we have something called libraries <laughs> where you go and they actually have hard copy books. And I used to love going to the library and getting the research for the topic that I was covering. Uh, and that's why, um, you know, I am a writer today because I love to write. I love to write anything. Like I said, term papers, research papers, book reports all that stuff. I I loved. I did. I was like a, I think everybody has like a nerd or geek side to them, something that they really love. And writing is one of the things that I love and research. So again, <laughs> February is the month of love. And this is the last episode for um, February series, the all about love series. So we had early on um, the understanding your five love languages. That was last week. Now, if you have not listened to that one yet, go ahead and do it because 
Rolicia Sieber. She is a psychotherapist certified in um, uh, the Godman, uh, Godman technique. And we talked about the, un the importance of knowing not only your lo love language, but the love language of those around you, such as your significant other. Yeah, you know, that's very important. That is very important because sometimes we can speak two different languages and, you know, you're always like at odds or is at, you know, with one another, it's always friction and you don't understand why. But if you understand the love language of your partner, those can become less, you know, those disagreements, those arguments, you know, the way that you want to be loved, the way that you show love. And, you know, the love language of your kids, you know, um, that's important as well. So you know how to address them where they will receive and they will receive your love, you know. So and then you like your co-workers and, and um, that's important, too. Or if you are an entrepreneur, your employees, it's good to know how they operate so you can get the best from them. OK, so check out last week's episode on that. And then we had the cast, um, well, two main members, the cast of my movie that I was a part of, along with my classmates from the Process of Filmmaking course with Tamashian Jones. Um, we did a student film. It's IMDB credit, y'all. I have a two ID IMDB credits as a writer and a director that I'm so proud of. I can actually call myself a filmmaker. Yay. And we had the premiere on Valentine's Day and it was phenomenal. It was wonderful. It was my first one. Like I've gone to a few, um, but this was the first one where it was actually, you know, something that I was a part of. We had a good turnout. Uh, we had the relationship panel, which was very good. Um, they, Tamashian and his wife was talking about the importance of communicating in your marriage. That's very key. And then after that, we showed our film. And then we had like a Q&A with the cast. And then a Q&A with us um, writers and directors. And we received so many comments and it's always a thing with our comments and that is they want more because again it's a um, it's a short so it's a 17 minute film and we did a lot in those 17 minutes we were very creative with the plot but people want more they wanted a full length movie a feature so we're going to see we're going to see but now you can watch it, okay? So if you go to Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O, and you look up the movie Wanted Love um, short film, then you, it, you'll see it there and you'll be able to rent it and watch it. And when you do, leave us a comment, okay? We want to know um, from you how you enjoyed it. We just want to hear that feedback. So again, you can watch... The movie that I was um, a part of, I was um, one of the directors and one of the writers of the movie. And you can find it on Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O dot com and just put in Wanted Love short movie. It should pop up and um, go ahead and watch it. So, again, I'm wrapping up the series. And you know that I like to come every so often whenever I can to just kick it with you all. Because I believe that change starts with a conversation. You know, that's our motto here at the Kicking It With K. Marie podcast. Um, that change starts with a conversation. So today I'm going to be looking down quite a bit because my notes. But again, when it's just me, you know, I'm not going to be before you long. You know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to hold you up. I'm going to keep it short and simple. Okay. But today I really want to talk about loving yourself unconditionally. Now, we always heard that we should love others unconditionally, especially if you are a Christian like I am. 
Um, you know, we always been taught, you know, just from the word that we are to love, you know, our neighbor as neighbors as ourselves. Uh, we are to love people unconditionally because that's how, you know, the father, he loves us. He is so gracious because we mess up time at the time at the time, but yet he still forgives us, you know, once we ask for that forgiveness. But a lot of us have a hard time just loving ourselves unconditionally. And I'm just going to um, just bring up a few points and how to treat yourself right. Because you deserve it. You deserve it. You take care of everybody else. You could be that person who has an aging parent, okay? You might be the only child or you might feel like you're the only child because you're the only one that is taking care of a parent or both parents. And that can be very taxing. Um, I've seen my mother do that with both my grandparents. Um, she took care of them and they lived, you know, well into their nineties. Um, they had, they had a great, they had great lives, but my mother, you know, she took care of them, but it comes a time where, you know, after you've taken care of everybody else, who's going to take care of you, you know, and don't wait until you've taken care of everybody else. While, or if I want to get biblical, whilst you are taking care of everyone else, make sure you carve out time to take care of you and love yourself unconditionally. Okay. Now, one way to love yourself unconditionally to treat yourself right is to not self-criticize yourself. I just said self twice, but do not self-criticize. Oh, I'm too fat. Oh, um, um, I shouldn't have eaten too much. Oh, why did I do that? You just really criticizing yourself. And it comes a time when you need just to, ex to start accepting yourselves the way you are. Okay. Now, of course, we all have goals. We all have goals and wanting to do better. It's nothing wrong with that. I'm talking about just constantly beating yourself up for the things that you're not doing or for the way that, you know, you look. You might have a few extra pounds on you. It's okay. It's okay. Don't wallow in self-criticism. And the first step towards unconditional love is to do away with, with self-hate, okay? Do not hate yourself. Don't do it. Love yourself. Because I know a lot of people fall into this category, okay? Don't do it. Now, the second way that you can love yourself unconditionally or just treat yourself better is to take care of your body. Now, we only get one, okay? And I'm speaking to myself on this too. <laughs> you know, I have a few extra pounds that I need to um, get rid of. But the thing is, I'm going back to not self-criticizing. I'm not beating myself up for having put on a few extra pounds. You know, it's not like I look at myself I'm like, oh, I just, I hate myself. I hate just the way this looks. I mean, I don't care for it, but I'm comfortable in my skin. You know, like if I never lost another pound, I still love me, you know, but taking care of ourselves, loving ourselves is to take care of the body that we have been given. Uh, it might be time to go on a diet. Okay. Not a fad diet. Not, not those y'all don't, but let it be a lifestyle. Just eat better. You know, eat, eat better, eat in moderation. You know, don't don't deprive. I said this before a couple of times on the on the podcast. Do not deprive yourself of the things that you really love. You can back off from it, you know, and 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 eat it in moderation, but 
just take care of yourself and um, take care of your body, exercising. You know, there are people who love exercising. If they miss one day at the gym, they are like in the corner crying, shivering with their thumb in their mouths, rocking back and forth because they missed a day at the gym. You, you know, you probably know some people like that, or it might be you, okay? But for those who it's a challenge, okay, me, of exercising, it's something that we have to do. It's just one of those things in life, y'all. I mean, really, it's, it's just one of those things that we have to do. And it's because you think you're thin, because I, I used to think this when I was slimmer. Oh, I don't have to exercise, you know, I'm good. But no. You have to exercise too, because exercise gives you strength. Okay, so just do it. Exercise. Um, I'm again. I'm looking at my notes. Exercise uh, promote the release of endorphins, and you know, endorphins those are the happy hormones. So it's a lot of benefits to exercise, and you'll find yourself in a better mood. You'll be happier. You will be more energized, and you have more endurance. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> who who don't want a little bit more endurance? Okay. You know what I'm talking about. So exercise regularly. Okay. And um, you'll feel better for it. Okay. Another way to love yourself unconditionally is to counter or conquer your fears. Okay. I think it's okay to have fears. You're going to have fears. Okay. You're going to have it. The trick is not to let it have you. Okay. So if you do not feel confident in, 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 in a certain thing, say a dress. Okay. If you do not feel confident in a certain dress, when you stand in front of the mirror, you know, stare into your eyes and tell yourself that you're going to rock it. And once you do, you step out wearing it. Your fears will vanish and you'll be proud of yourself for over overcoming your fear and reluctance. So that was just an example. Okay, so, but you get the point. If it's something that you really want to do, Step out and do it. Tell yourself, I got this. I'm going to accomplish this. Words have power. You remember sticks and stones will make, break my bones, but, but words would never hurt me. That's not true. That's not true. Words are powerful, okay? If you speak positively to yourself, like some people have um, the church people, you have your faith confessions, okay? And for those who are not in the church, you have your, your mantras that you say over yourself. I am somebody. I can do this. You know, whatever that gives you fear, turn those words into positivity. And I promise you, you will be better for it, okay? Now, another way to love yourself unconditionally, and we spoke about this um, before on the show a couple of times, but it, it bears to be repeated. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Again, I've said this before, we are so quick, so quick to forgive others more than we are when, we, when it comes to ourselves. Forgive yourself. I personally had to um, do this a while back, years ago. It was years ago. And, you know, I did something that I would never thought I would do, ever. But I did it. It took me a while to forgive myself. It really did. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold you up. But I did, I released it. And once I did, I felt like a 50 pound or 150 pound, whatever weight 
was lifted off of me. We have to learn to forgive ourselves. You are not alone in this. A lot of people have a hard time forgiving themselves. You can punish yourselves for the things that you've done, but it's not going to do anything for you. Let it go. Just let it go. It's done. You know, forgive yourself, repent if you if you need to. Um, let it go. Let it go. As a matter of fact, because I just feel led to say this. Y'all know I'm a Christian <laughs> and I went to Bible school and everything. So I know my stuff. And the guy still works in me and through me. Okay. So somebody need to hear this about forgiving yourself and letting it go. You, if you are that person, I want you to just repeat this after me. I release it. I release it. You know what it is. Say, I release it. Now say, I release whatever, say whatever that thing or things is or are that you need to release. If it's more than one thing, say it. Say it, go ahead. Say, I release Okay, and do it, release it, and don't for, don't ever let it bring you shame again. Don't ever let it stop you from achieving your goal. Don't let it stop you from loving again. Don't let it stop you from doing whatever it is. You released it, you let it go, now move on. Okay. And just keep repeating that. Re keep some of you may repeat it and repeat it and tears start streaming from your eyes. That's a good thing. Okay. All right. Now, another way to love yourself unconditionally and treat your treat yourself right is to surround yourself with positive people. Okay, so I'm it's a two for, okay. Surround yourself with positive people and remove toxic relationships from your life. Remove the toxic person or persons from your life and surround yourself with positive people. People pleasing has got to stop if you want to love yourself more. People pleasing has got to stop if you want to love yourself unconditionally. Okay? You cannot people please. It doesn't get you anywhere but a, a, a headache, debt. Okay? Years ago. Years ago. Like in my teenage year to my early 20s, I was a people pleaser. I wanted to please people. I did. But then, you know, I was going to church and everything. And, um, you know, the word just came across over the pulpit about not not pleasing people. And that set me free. <laughs> OK, that set me free, because when you please trying to please people, you neglect self. When you try to please people. You put yourself in a position where you shouldn't. For example, if I was still a people pleaser, I think, I, I, again, I mentioned this before um, on the show. It was a time where coworkers wanted to go out, you know, team building. I don't do anything like that after work hours. I'm sorry. That's my time. <laughs> Not, I wouldn't mind team building like during the day, which we have done before a few times. But this particular time, they wanted to do it um, after work hours. And I was like, no, I'm going to pass. And some, I'm not going to say some people, but a particular person, co-worker, 
at another location. Um, she was kind of upset. I'm like, what you <laughs> getting upset for? But I was, I simply said, no, after work is my time. That's my time. That's my self-care. Even me doing nothing. That's my time. Now, if I was a people pleaser, I would try to go out with them. And even though I don't want to be there, you know, making myself miserable. But no, no, I, I didn't. Okay, no, again. And that's another thing. Look, unless you are just that person, you know, who wants to do hang out after work and, and do work things after your work day ends. Like I don't have my um, email sent to hooked up to my telephone. A lot of people at work do. I don't know. I'm at five o'clock. I'm out. I'm out. I'm not answering no type of emails. 501 and beyond. I, I'm, I'm just not going to do it because I love me. I love myself and I value my time. Okay. All right. So surround yourself with positive people. Choose your friends wisely and surround yourself with only those people who motivate you, make you feel happy and light and have a positive influence on you. Hang out with those people. And I like that. Hang out with those people who make you feel light because you don't want to be burdened down with heaviness with people, their constant problems. I mean, it's it's okay to be a friend. It's okay to be a friend, you know, how your friends might have an issue and they want to talk to you about it. That's fine. I'm talking about those people who only talk about their problems. It's like a one-sided friendship. The only time that they want to talk to you is because they have a problem. I have a problem with that. Okay. So, and some of you need to reevaluate some friendships too. You do. You need to reevaluate some friendships. Again, hang out with people who motivates you, um, who are, who makes you happy, who make you feel light. Okay. Hang out with those people and cut, cut, cut those toxic relationships. Cut them, cut them. Okay. Having toxic relationships in your life when I do you any good, you need to let them go immediately. That's not something that you wean yourself off of. You let it, you let it go immediately. It's, it's nothing cute about being with a toxic person, whether that's a, a significant other, whether that's a sibling. Yeah, some people that's related to you. You're, you're a mo- your mother or your father. If they're toxic, you can love from a distance. Love from a distance. If, you know, they're your um, a family member. Cut it. Cut it. Okay. Another thing to love yourself unconditionally is to indulge in activities that gives you joy. Okay. Follow your passions. Um, take it up as a hobby or a profession. Simply stick to um, activities that you really enjoy doing. Okay, like for me, writing, I love. Um, I love, I do, I love to write. And that's why I'm a writer. Uh, filmmaking, that's a, a new passion of mine. Okay, but writing has always been a passion of mine. Singing has always been a passion of mine. Um going and I found new and I found new um hobbies and and passions. That's going to happen as you branch out, you meet people, as you're hanging out with those positive people, you might discover new passions that you've never even thought about um liking. Like I I have one. I've never thought in a million years never thought in a million years that I would like car shows and things of that nature. Never. And I do. I like that. Okay. So you, again, hang um, surround yourself with people, uh, positive people, and do things that will spark you joy, that will spark joy from you. Another thing that a lot of people have issues with as well 
And it's very important, y'all. It really is. Stand up for yourself. Don't be a pushover. Don't. Don't let people walk on you. Don't do it. It is not okay for someone to treat you badly and then they walk away freely. There's something wrong with that picture. You got to set wait, you've got to set your standards high and make sure you maintain them by taking a stand for yourself every time anyone tries to undermine, criticize, or treat you badly. All this for the sake of your self-esteem. Stand up for yourself. You deserve it. You are somebody. Don't let nobody push you around. Don't do it. And see, Annette, when I see that, because I've always been a person for the underdog. I, I, and I, I'm going to stick up. Now, in the past, like when I was younger, you know, teenager, even though I had a, a heart for the underdog, but it, it, I, I didn't speak out against it. Some, some things I did, but I wish I would have done it more. But as I got older, oh, I do that now. If I see somebody that um, is uh, getting walked. Um, on or over by someone constantly, oh, you better believe I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. So don't be that person, okay? You have so much in you and don't let nobody just push you around. Let your self-esteem grow if you have a hard time with that, okay? Okay. If you have a hard time with that, you might want to talk to somebody about it. You might want to talk to a professional about it, okay? Again, here we are therapy friendly. We believe in receiving, going to, and getting therapy. There's nothing wrong with it. We have to stop this stigma in the black community. It's getting a little better, but it's still a stigma. It doesn't mean you're crazy. It just means you just need to talk to somebody. And a professional will be able to help you out, give you steps, give you how to's, how to stand up for yourself if you have a problem doing that. Okay. A few more, and then I'm going to wrap up. Kind of said this already. Give yourself permission to follow your heart. That's kind of self explanatory. And the last thing is show love and kindness to others. I know you're like, well, how is that going to um, help me love myself unconditionally? See, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling that comes from feeling needed. Um, so reach out to someone, show love to someone who can't pay you back. Okay. I know I said that was the last one, but I think I have just a a few more. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Stop trying to be perfect, y'all. Don't do it. Stop trying to be perfect. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. Stop. Stop. Stop trying to be perfect. Perfection does not exist. Because what one person see as perfection or perfect, another person just may see it as, eh. Do yourself a favor. Do not chase the unattainable. Stop trying to be perfect. Now, there's nothing wrong with setting goals and doing your best at it. But let's just say you just happen to fail at it. Keep going. Don't beat yourself up. Stop trying to be perfect. No one is perfect. This, this mic on? No one is perfect, okay? All right, y'all. Again, I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, I really hope you got something from it. I do. Um, love yourself unconditionally. You deserve it. You deserve it. It's something that we have to check in about ourselves often. Like, how am I treating myself? You know, am I taking care of myself physically? Am I taking care of myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually? 
Okay. Love yourself unconditionally. Thank you so much. Again, I really hope that this helps someone. And I'm about to do something that sparks and give me joy. I am about to go and get my hustle on. <laughs> I like to dance. Okay. That gets me joy. So do something this week that gives you joy. If you are in a toxic relationship with someone, does not necessarily mean it's a, a significant other. Anybody in your life that's toxic, cut it. Cut it. And again, forgive yourself. Let it go. Release whatever that is holding on to you. Let it go. Release it. Okay. And so I will be back with you all next week. And that's a brand new month, March. This year is going by. So in March, we're going to be talking about family matters. I'm going to be talking about some aspects of the family dynamic, family relationships. Okay. I have like the next six months planned out. I am so proud of myself, y'all. I do. <laughs> All right. And it's some great topics coming up this month. Not this month, but I mean this year. I'm sorry. I'm just excited. So again, like, share, comment. Okay, I do want to hear from you. So whatever platform that you are listening to me on or watching me on, comment. Let me know that, you know, what I was talking about, that it, so that you need it. Because again, it's, it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear that. And let me know I'm on the right track. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, I will see you all next week. Have a great one. See ya. Bye. Oh, let's go. Let's go. It's time to turn up your radio. Turn up the radio. Just so you know. Just so you know. You're kicking in with K. That's all I'm going to say. You're here now.